You're listening to episode 20 of the Air Hug Community Podcast. Hello there. I'm Judy Arizoza, your host here on the Air Hug Community Podcast. Here we share conversations and stories with guests and myself that inspire us to dive into topics on things like relationships, self, skills, confidence, and staying connected. We know that life is better with a dose of air hugs, and we know that when we improve the lives of others, we exponentially improve our own life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Air Hug Community Podcast. I am so exciting. I'm smiling ear to ear because I'm looking at our guest today who's also smiling ear to ear. And I have to tell you, the first time I met her, I don't know if she remembers this, but the first time I met her, I cried. <laughs> and I this. Tell you me don't more. remember that? I will, oh. I'll remember. Oh, but our guest today is the incredibly talented and um, really special person, Natalie Sinisgali. So just really quick, before you do your story, I'm going to tell you why I cried. So my daughter was getting married and we made an appointment to come and see Natalie, who has a phenomenal photography business in Rochester, New York. And we sat down and she showed us this wedding album and it was so beautiful. I just started crying. (laughs) It's a good reason to cry. It was a beautiful reason to cry. So Natalie, tell us who you are, how your journey started and how you got to where you are today. Okay. Yeah. This is a brief story on 36 years of life. Um, (laughs) So so when I was born, no, um, I... (laughs) We'll start at college. So, well, let's start at high school briefly. So in high school, I was very um, artsy. I was an artsy kid. I loved photography. I was always in the dark room. Um, I was like, I knew the janitor because I would be there till like five, which is really late in school. <laughs> um, and I'd be in the in the photo room, like, you know, making sure that the chemicals were set for the next day. I was like, you know, super overachiever um, and just, you know, loved photography. And so um, I ended up going to RIT, which is the Rochester Institute of Technology. It's a college that happens to be in our city here, Rochester, New York, but um, it's world known for worldwide, known worldwide for photography. And so I went there, but I wanted to get, I, I'm very pragmatic. And I was like, oh, like, should I get a degree in photography? Because I'm also really good at math and science. So they happened to have a hybrid program that was more of an imaging science. Um, the program was called Imaging and Photographic Technologies. And so I, I was studying I took a few photo courses, but it was mostly about how cameras work, optics, um, light, color science, color theory, um, how to code. So like, how would you code Photoshop and image processing and um, that kind of stuff. And I actually ended up doing an internship for NASA, um, going through aerial imagery, so satellite photos and like analyzing those for environmental things and just like super nerdy, like got down like a real nerd path. Um, and I loved it. I'm still a total nerd. Um, I had <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a closet nerd. Uh, so, <laughs> so I actually signed up to go to graduate school. I got a full scholarship and stipend to do graduate work at RIT for imaging science. And um, that seemed like a really great offer. So I took it. And then two days before I was supposed to go to grad school, um, I decided not to. So <laughs> I had a meeting with my advisor and I had done his son's senior portraits. Um, and actually to bring that story full circle, they just asked me to shoot his wedding photos too. Um, cause he's now getting married cause it's been, I don't know, a hundred years since I graduated from college. But <laughs> at the time their son was 16 and I, I did his senior portraits and, you know, I was delivering the portraits that day and my advisor was like, God, like, these are so beautiful. Like you seem so happy when you're shooting. Like you don't really seem that happy in the lab. And I was like, oh yeah, nobody's happy. It's a lab. And he's like, no, that, that's not true. Like other people in here are happy. I was like, oh. Um, so uh, we had to talk about it and I just decided to, to not go. So I started a photo studio that day. It was a Friday afternoon. Uh, actually, no, it was Friday at like seven in the morning. And so I showed up at my parents' door in Hanoi Falls. Like 
an hour later and they were really alarmed that I was awake that early. Um, and I was like, mom, dad, <laughs> sit down, we have to have a talk. And they were like, oh my God, this is finally like the shoe falling. Like this, I, I was like never grounded. I was never in trouble. And, you know, I'm coming to them at 8am in the morning. We need to talk big story, you know, something big. Um, and so I told them I wasn't going to go to grad school and they were like, oh, okay. Are we starting a photo studio in the basement? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, okay. And so my parents are just super surprised. That's not everyone's story. Of course, like yeah. very fortunate. My parents are incredibly supportive. They're, they're wonderful. And, um, so we started a photo studio in my, in my parents' basement. Um, and then fast forward 13 years, I have <laughs> nothing interesting <laughs> happened for 13 years. No, um, I, I am still, uh, I still own a photography studio. I have really fallen in love with the experience of helping people feel good about themselves. So for me, it started out as photography and I enjoyed taking really interesting and beautiful artistic photos. And that really morphed for me over the years of doing portrait photography to realizing that I could have an impact on how people felt about themselves. And the day in day out of really getting to know someone um, and having that relationship where when they leave, they, they feel better about themselves. That's what I'm addicted to. That's the thing that I will do forever, my whole life. And I may do it in different ways and I'm already doing it in different ways. I've, I've started coaching. Um, I'm doing branding and business coaching for female entrepreneurs and, you know, women that want to start their own personal brands. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I've kind of just evolved over these, not devolved. I have evolved over these years, <laughs> um, into finding new ways to, help specifically women because for whatever reason that's that's my passion i i want to help women feel good about themselves and um and i think being in a photographic industry specifically it started about their image and how they think about their bodies and themselves and how they show up in photographs because that's that's the issue at hand every time someone shows up in front of my lens because they're they're immediately like oh i hate having my photo taken I'm, I'm never photographed i'm too fat i'm too old my nose is too big i have acne i don't like to be in the camera da, da, da. Um, so that's kind of where I started in terms of helping women with their image and, and how that relates to their self-worth. Um, but then beyond that, I've been really loving working with business owners and women that want to um, achieve in, in other ways too. And so now I, I love helping them make money and take over the world. And yeah, feel good about what they're doing. Can I just say, because you have done pictures while well, you did my daughter's wedding and you've done shoots for me twice. You are so amazing at just like getting, you got me to relax and just feel good about, and you know, we all have those insecurities and it, not every photographer does that. I have to say, not every photographer makes you feel that way, but oh my gosh, you spot on do that. Like, and it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That's my passion. That's, that's why I, it shows. I'm still interested in photography. That's why I'm very good at photography. And so it's a tool, but I don't think of myself as a photographer. Like that's not my first identity point. It's just how I do what I do, if that makes sense. It's how you deliver your. My service your, is helping women feel good about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it there? And there's so many ways to do that. That is so interesting. So, all right. Now here we are in 2020. Mm. And actually, you have a podcast. I do. And you launched it pre-pandemic, correct? <laughs> By like a month, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you were already... I had recorded a whole season, yeah. Yeah, you were already, um, what do I want to say, changing how you were helping women. You know, mm -hmm. it was no longer just through the lens of a camera. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that, how your first, I'm going to call it, is that your first pivot, do you think? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I love, I love the concept of pivoting and I, mm -hmm. I think maybe it's become kind of buzzwordy. I don't know if people are sick of yeah. that concept yet or not, but I think it's a really big ideological shift that needs to happen where people need to realize that pivoting is, is the way of life. And I, I learned that as a, as a business owner because evolve or die as a business owner. Like if you're doing yeah. the same thing that you did even a year ago, you are losing traction. You're not gaining. And you're, if you're not gaining, you're losing. <laughs> there's, there's no, oh my step. gosh. Yes. There's no, there's no like holding your ground. Um, so 
I, I think my first big pivot actually happened when I stopped thinking about myself as a photographer and started thinking about what I was trying to achieve. That was a huge mental pivot for me instead of just, I want to take pictures. It's like, okay, great. Every human out there with a camera wants to take pictures. Like, why do you care? Um, so that was a, an important one, which ultimately ended up opening the door for me to, to create Embolden. So Embolden is the, the second brand that I have, which is where the podcast lives. It's where my business coaching lives and speaking engagements um, and some other resources that I'm, that are in the works. Um, so all of those are housed under this, this big pivot of Embolden, which is, you know, mm -hmm. my entrepreneur. Love the name. Coaching. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was hard to come up with naming a business is actually the hardest part. Um, so that was, that was great. And Airhug community is a phenomenal name, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so then the podcast was a way for me to bring my message to people that I'm not privileged enough to photograph. Right. So like mm -hmm. I, you know, and I, I, I always feel like it's a privilege to photograph someone. When someone books mm -hmm. me, I'm like, this is special. This is an honor. Um, but I wanted to be able to connect with and and help and, you know, offer resources to women that were not in front of my lens. So the podcast was the first broad reach mm -hmm. thing that I created. And it still is to this day. Like I, I the coaching is also now broad reaching because it's remote. I think that that was a huge pivot again, where we went from analog to digital. Like I used mm -hmm. to do a lot of things in person and now I do a lot of things digitally, mm -hmm. which I think most people have <laughs> encountered. Yeah. Really funny. Um, and then recently lots of pivots have happened. Um, so I, I got pregnant and became a mom. And so that was, um, again, that was more of a mental pivot, but it also did, I had to change some things about my schedule and my availability. I was really sick for my entire pregnancy. So that was awful. Um, excuse me. And so I had to make some changes there. Um, but then I would say the next big pivot was when COVID hit. Mm. And so at that point, I have NSP, my photography studio, and in Bolden, mm -hmm. but NSP really needed my attention so, so quickly and so, you know, strongly because I have three employees there. Mm -hmm. And so, plus me. Um, so there's four of us that it's, it's our livelihood. That's our income. And so I really was like, okay, I guess we're going to be, I, I kind of put him holding on the back burner and I had a lot of content ready to go, luckily, which was great. So that kind of mm -hmm. kept rolling pretty quietly in the background for a bit. Um, but we had to figure out how to make money without shooting like during the, the government lockdown. And so um, my team and I really pivoted hard towards education for photographers. So we created an incredible course. It's um, how to use your it's called camera boot camp. Um, and oh, so, yeah. <laughs> and so it's this great course about how to use your camera. I had been teaching that class in person for almost for years, actually for four years at that point. And so I'd always wanted to create, to make it digital. And so this was like, oh, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's make it digital. So I was lucky enough to get the, the PPP, the paycheck protection program, um, mm -hmm federal assistance for business owners. And that was, that afforded me the opportunity to pay my team to help me create this online course. And so we, we created revenue for that and it kept us going for the few months that we were unable to shoot, um, which was huge. And then it kind of went on the back burner because then we were able to shoot again. Um, but we have a very seasonal business. So we're going to be pivoting back towards ed education in about a week uh, when we are sure. not you know, we're not shooting anymore for the season, um, because cases are really high right now and it's almost Christmas and, um, we're, we're burned out. We've done, who oh, my team and I have done more shoots since the reopen in what, April, um, between April and November this year than we did all of last year. So we're, we're tired. Wow. You have to be exhausted. <laughs> yeah we're tired and it's harder to do the shoots because we're trying to not get COVID. We're trying not to spread COVID. So, I mean, we're, we're social distancing, we're wearing masks, which is honestly really hard to shoot with a mask because you, when you breathe, it fogs up the eyepiece that we look through when we're shooting. So like we're doing that, we're making sure that the images are in focus because it's hard to see. We're hand sanitizing. We're making sure that our props are easy to sanitize. We're, you know, doing the whole thing. Um, so so yeah, it's, it's important to have diversified 
income, I think, even if you do have a day job, um, the skills that you have at your day job, maybe you use them somewhere else to make money, or maybe you're selling things out of your garage, or maybe you're creating things to sell, or, you yeah. know, or you have a spouse that has, you know, a different income. But um, I think that that's really where security lies. And so your ability to pivot is really an acknowledgement of your confidence in yourself and your skills and knowing that you're not pigeonholed into just one thing that you can do. So uh, for example, a friend of mine, she's a singer. She's an incredible singer. She's the voice of an angel and she has a band and they were just starting to go on tour, like ne big national tours, COVID hit, screeching halt, can't do events or gigs. And she's making charcuterie boards now and she's selling them and she's making money. And it's like, yes. Wow. She's turned her artistic Exactly. Talent, a different way. That's and incredible. Since I've known her, I think of cheese. Like the second thing I think of after singing is cheese. She loves cheese. And so this whole thing makes sense. But like that is so important. I think that the ability to pivot and that confidence in yourself and your ability to reinvent yourself is vital in any climate, yeah. but particularly in a pandemic. Yeah. And we are being tested, right? Mm. Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah. So, wow. There's a lot to think there. And then yeah, throw sorry, in I talk a lot. <laughs> no, I love it. That's what I love to let people just go on because I didn't know any of this. You know, I knew you became a mom. By the way, doing all of these things and birthing a newborn, <clears throat> being sick during your pregnancy. Okay, when was your son born? February 26th. So, just before COVID. So not only does COVID come, now you've really got cabin fever because here you are with a newborn. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a lot. And, <coughs> Excuse and me. people are like, well, you know, what's it like having a baby in a pandemic? I'm like, no, I don't know. I've never had a baby before. And, and everything changed for me basically overnight. I became a mom. The pandemic hit. I heard the word coronavirus when I was two, two hours postpartum. I had just given birth and I heard the word. And I was like, what is that? And then I was like, oh, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm bleeding. I don't care. Um, so, you know, overnight became a mom, was thrown into a pandemic, was a suddenly like an online educator for photography. And, and then the other big pivot that I didn't even talk about is that we switched to all digital because we used to do in-person ordering sessions. We used to do- Oh, yes. I studio. remember. Yeah. Like, Patients in, in, in studio, people would pick out their photos in the studio. People would pick up their photos at the studio. We changed everything about how the studio operates. The fact that we were able to do more shoots in eight months than we did in 12 last year is because we switched everything to all digital. So that was honestly a long time coming. And once I made the change, I was almost a little bit embarrassed that I hadn't done it sooner. I was like, oh man, we were kind of like a dinosaur in a lot of ways. Like we were... I, and, and it's, it's give and take, right? Like some of those components were important in distinguishing us from other studios, but I think that there were certain elements that were inconvenient for our clients because we were, you know, they, nobody wanted to pick up their orders in person. It turns out <laughs> I was, I thought it was nice to have that last touch point in person. And yes, people love seeing us and they love coming to the studio, but our clients are busy. They're working professionals, their parents, their, you know, newlyweds or whatever. And so when we switched to shipping every order to their home, people were like, oh my God, thank you. We we're like, oh, we could have been doing this all, all along. All along, right? Yeah. So, yeah. A but, lot of you know, un until it became necessary, right? My mother used to always say necessity is the mother of invention. 100% and true. So that was, that was just the time for you to do it. That's when you <laughs> had to do it, you know? Yep. Yeah, you're right. It worked out. It would have been a nice to have versus we need to do this now. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's a huge, those are huge changes. Um, but congratulations on doing so well with all that. Wow. I'm blown away. Um, tell me about your business coaching. Sure. Well, wait, before we do that, can I interview you back? Cause I'm used to like interviewing people when I'm on a podcast. Oh, <laughs> so You pivoted too. So, I mean, you've gone from doing in-person workouts to potentially virtual workouts or, I mean, you started this podcast, like how, how have you pivoted? How have you changed through this? 
So I actually, yeah, that's a very good question. And maybe a lot of people don't know that. So I went from doing in-person small group personal sessions, but I actually started doing online. I had an online membership since 2018, but people really didn't catch on. So, and then I've always had an online nutrition business um, and offered various, previously I offered small group, like six or eight week sessions. And I did then, one of those. Yeah. yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Um, we went to memberships for both. So we have, uh, right now we're not shut down where we are. We're kind of out in the country a little bit. So we're still okay. So we have our small group sessions, but those people are all, um, and it's reservation only limited, limited mm -hmm. spots. So those people who are in-person members are also online members. So they have uh, password access to a membership site where they can view the entire library of workouts and other little things that we do. And then there's online only members who meet with me in person twice a week. Mm -hmm. so we do Zoom workouts twice a week and then they have the entire library at their disposal. And there's extra things in there like little extra warm up sessions and little extra talks and things like that. And then we have our mission nutrition membership, which is very much, it's not so much calories and grams and this and that, it's mind, body and spirit. It's what are your habits? How are your habits and behaviors going to serve you? And many people actually, there's so much information out there about eating right and so many overused buzzwords like fad diets, you know, that there's so many of them and people are like, well, this was right last year. What's right this year? What's so we, we yeah. focus a lot on teasing out what works for the individual, but mostly practicing the behaviors and habits that will help with stress levels and numbing and emotional eating and that kind of thing. So more than so it's it, people may not lose 20 pounds in 20 weeks you know mm -hmm. or in 10 weeks but that's not the goal the goal is to set us up long term for healthier living so that's incredible and i love that about your mission i think that that's um so necessary and so needed for long-term success not just the the quick yeah. of you know the sexy I lost 20 pounds in four days. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to do a detox and I get those questions all the time and it's fine. Okay. It definitely is. You actually have to be willing to think of it long-term, not like, you know, I'm going on vacation in six weeks. You know, I've had people call me, I'm going on vacation in three weeks. Can you help me? And I'm like, it depends what you're trying to accomplish in three weeks. You know, you got to be realistic. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. so. people don't want to hear that. <laughs> people don't want to hear that because we all wait till the last minute or we're like, how did we get to this point? But it's, it's definitely lots of deep dives, lots of uncovering, mm -hmm. you know, things like we talk a lot about, and I just did an episode on this on, on decision fatigue and how mm -hmm. it really affects willpower. And you can't understand why some days, you know, thank goodness you stopped shooting last week when you did, because you know, there's only so much you can do where we get to a breaking point and there's just too many decisions being made. And then when it comes to the decisions of choosing to eat healthy, you're like, yeah, well, you know, I don't know, pizza and wings yeah. sound really good. <laughs> totally. And it can be really hard to sort out the difference between urgent and important. And those are very different concepts, but they feel confusing at the time, right? So like, is your health important? Yes. But urgently, you need to eat dinner right now because you didn't plan and now you have this problem. And so you're not going to make the important decision of like, what's my long-term health? How does this support my overall goals? You have to make the urgent decision of like, well, I'm going to murder my husband if I don't eat something right now. So yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me solve that problem. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like getting caught with your pants down. You got to be totally. Oh, yeah. Totally. So it sounds like you were really well positioned already in a digital world. Like you were a couple years ahead of the Zoom curve here. <laughs> you know, I was. I'm definitely still working on things like sound quality. So as, as you know, like we're trying to, Zoom recording is not the greatest quality. So oh, that's yeah. not, not the recording I try to put up. So now I'm, I'm like looking at two cameras, trying to figure it out. But and there's bloopers. So I don't do a lot of editing. I'm like, what you get 
is if you were in the gym with me, this is what you would get. And yeah, they know that, totally. which actually is kind of funny sometimes. You know, I count wrong. <laughs> Never does anyone not do enough reps. It's always too many. But <laughs> not on purpose. Totally. You know. That's perfect though. And I, I think too, and this is an episode that I'm excited to record as soon as I start recording again for mine, which is coming up soon. Um, there's an, I think a new level of professionalism and it's, it's more human centric. It's more, I authentic, love that. more yeah. real. It's not, you know, that you have to be this perfect and like perfect is a whole nother thing that we can talk about. Cause yeah. <laughs> It's a whole thing in the fitness and, you know, especially with your personal story, which I know about, you know, in terms of like bodybuilding and, and, you know, your whole journey with fitness. Um, but this idea of like the perfect professional, you know, the, the mom that goes to work and works like she doesn't have kids, you know, she's always on time and she always looks perfect. And she, you know, da da da. And like, when she takes a call, like there's no children in the background. And I mean, none of us have that opportunity anymore. Like we're, or well, some of us do, but it depends on, you know, your situation and where you are in life. But like, you know, if it's between working from home on zoom and, or having your kids, you know, alone, <laughs> like you, have, you know, the schools were closed and people had to work and kids were there and people have pets. And sometimes kids run around naked behind you on the zoom. And like, we're all humans. Like we're not professionals devoid of these lives that, you know, everyone actually has not to say that you have to make it weird. You don't have to, you know, there still is a professionalism, but it's not what it used to be, I think. And, and I think that that's a good thing. I think the new professionalism is being relatable. You know, mm. um, it is what it is. You know, I've got a ponytail on, I'm in my sweaty workout clothes, you know, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I've just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, right. Yeah. Are you kidding? Um, yeah. It's just, it's more relatable. If having a perfectly curated, first of all, that's exhausting. And then that's not who we are. None of us is perfectly curated. So how can we live up to that? You know, and then it's yeah. like you go to put up an Instagram post and it's perfect, but then they see you in person if we ever do see people in person again, or in, let's say a Zoom coaching call, right? You know, get on a zoom coaching call you know for me you get what you get you know <laughs> and they're like don't drink water do this i'm slugging down my water yeah, like, okay. yeah. yeah. i was eating on my last zoom call i was like well i'm either not gonna eat or you, you, i'm either on time or i'm late and i'm eating or it's both i don't know sometimes it's both <laughs> yeah yeah but i think it, it's definitely more it's more realistic and it's more it's more relatable it's you know. more sustainable too. I think that there'll be ultimately, well, we, there's other reasons that we're burning out, but I do think it's important for people's health and just our, our emotional stability to not have such a schism between parts of our lives. I think it's actually really yeah. nice to see how we kind of are, are whole human beings. Exactly. And you know, if we're going on pretending to be perfect, it's going to build up and build up and build up. It's again, a story. I talked a lot about stories that we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I get this a lot with people with the all or nothing mentality. I'm like, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. <laughs> some days we're good and some days, you know, and I don't even like the word good and bad or, or binary thinking for that matter. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty much always on a spectrum. You know, some days you do things a little bit more in alignment. And some days, like you said, you show up with dirty hair and, you know, spinach in your teeth. <laughs> and they're both or chicken us. wing in your teeth. <laughs> they're both okay. They're both us. And ultimately, I mean, depend, I guess it depends on what your service is, right? If you're a model, then like, no, your hair has to be clean. You shouldn't have spinach in your teeth. But if you are coaching, like my ability to coach someone is not diminished by the fact that I haven't washed my hair. Like, I'm still delivering an incredible service to them. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't know. My hair's gross. This is, this is, this is. Low on the all, priority list. We're all doing our best right now. It's, it's not always pretty. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> this has been so interesting. So this is so funny. I originally wanted to ask you, I haven't even asked the question that I told you I was going to ask you when I brought you on, but I thought, let's bring it up anyways. So I, it's one of the things that you have done when you were shooting photography, and I don't even know if you've done this in 2020, hmm. um, was 
boudoir shoots. Yeah. I did this in my garage in 2020. <laughs> so that's actually uh, a great Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell us, was it cold? <laughs> it was summer. Um, okay. So for those of you who don't know, boudoir photography is, I, I usually call it sexy lady photography, but it's basically um, intimate portraits of women and, and that can mean anything, right? So sexy can yeah. be whatever sexy is for you. I've had women, I've, I've photographed every type of boudoir shoot. I've had women fully clothed in sweaters and jeans and like cozy leg warmers. Um, I've had women be photographed completely naked. I've had everything in between of fancy lingerie, simple lingerie, tank tops from Target, um, pajamas, like men's button down shirts, um, anything you could imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, it's usually booked as a gift for a partner. However, I very frequently explain to women um, immediately that it, it's, it's a gift for them. Like, and for me, I don't care if they're giving it to someone that's great. If, if that's, you know, it's a beautiful gift. Um, but I'm always there for the woman that I'm photographing. And I'm there to make sure that she feels beautiful and confident and see herself in a new way and see herself through the eyes of someone who loves her. So like, that's how I always, you know, describe. And like, not that I love these, I'm like, I don't know them. Um, usually I don't, yeah. I don't know them at all, but, um, but I see every woman is beautiful. That's just something that's in me that I always have. Um, I've always seen the best in people. And so I'm able to use my photography skills to show that to them in an indisputable way, which is pretty cool. So, Boudoir used to be here in my studio pre-COVID. Um, we had professional hair and makeup, um, which is a great way to start, right? So get your hair and makeup. Yeah, totally. Um, Pampered music on, champagne. Um, you know, we'd get their music, like their favorite playlist in advance. And we'd have mimosa or champagne, depending on the hour um, or not. Um, sometimes we want want straight champagne in the morning. Um, and then... I, we would do the shoot. We had a whole wardrobe. We had a dressing room. We had a beautiful bathroom. There's crystal chandeliers here. We've got um, just a gorgeous studio. So then COVID hits and I'm like, okay, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah. So I, and I had really been relying on, I mean, for me, it, it was kind of an interesting thing. I was like, I, I had to distill the experience down. I had to really stop and think what makes this important? What makes it special? And how am I creating this outcome for, for the women that are participating in this shoot? Um, and so I ultimately decided that it, it couldn't be the studio because I, I didn't always have that and I couldn't have it anymore. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, okay. And then um, I did decide that we needed hair and makeup, that that was a, that was a non-negotiable for me. I wouldn't do boudoir without hair and makeup because I think it is an important part of the transformation, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally. Like you just feel better when someone's touching your head and like doing your hair for you. And, um, and it does relay very well in the, in the photos to have your hair and makeup done. Um, and then, and that was it. And so I was like, you know what, if, um, if, if all we have is hair and makeup and, and I'm shooting it somewhere random, then let's do that. So I actually cleaned out my garage um, and I, I put a bed out in the garage and I set up uh, like a big privacy um, curtain across the middle of my driveway so that you couldn't see. Luckily, it's like very private on the sides. It was just kind of like the, the street <laughs> that mm -hmm. was less than private. So put up a big curtain. Um, I had a friend, actually, I did know her, um, tell me she was in for, you know, two days. She was up in town for two days. She lives in North Carolina. I shot her wedding and, um, I'd actually already done a boudoir shoot for her. And so this was, um, a great opportunity to try this out and she was pregnant. So it was maternity photos too. And so I was like, well, I'm just going to bring a bed out into the garage and we're going to do it. And she's like, okay, cool. I'm game. And so the whole time I'm sitting up, I'm like, what the F am I doing? Like, this is crazy. Like, this is insane. Um, and so <laughs> there were like bugs, like there was, we're outside, it's summer. There was like flies in the garage. I've got fans going. There's no AC. It's like a hundred degrees out. Um, and so she and was you're putting lights, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like insane. So we did it and it was like the best shoot I've ever done. Like I'm looking at these photos and I was like, oh my God, this was so good. So we ended up 
offering it. I, I was unsure until we did it. I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. I didn't know it was going to work. Even during the shoot, I, I was like, I think this is working. I mean, I'm very confident in my photography skills. I probably wouldn't have done this like, I don't know, 10 years ago. <laughs> like mm-hmm. at this point, I know I can do, I can shoot anything anywhere, truly. And now I have proof of that because I just shot Google yeah. in my garage. Um, and I'm happy to send a photo along. She approved the whole shoot. She's like, yeah, share it with anybody. I don't care. Um, so if you want to post in the show notes or anything, you're welcome to. It, it's it's funny how beautiful it is. Um, yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was a really big um, exploratory endeavor. And not from just a photography standpoint, but also from like, you know, what's the important part of a boudoir? And it turns out it's just creating a safe space for women to be seen and heard and, and feel beautiful. And I can do that anywhere. Turns out. <laughs> well, a lot has to do with how you talk to people, you know, cause you, you do make people feel so relaxed and so just like, okay, you know, thank you. Uh, that, but that's pretty amazing. A boudoir shoot in your garage. It really, <laughs> so it really is location independent. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was wild. We also did a virtual boudoir shoot. So I did one um, <laughs> with someone on FaceTime. On FaceTime, you can actually take a photo with someone's camera. It's like um, kind of, it's like a little button that most people don't know about on FaceTime. Really? And so I actually did, that was the other experience where I was like, wow, I really can do this anywhere. I can do it without a camera. Um, so we actually did, uh, <laughs> she had like a tripod and I would just tell her where to put the camera and then, and I couldn't even control exposure or like composition without explaining to her where I wanted the camera. Um, and then I would go, I would be like, okay, go walk over to your window and I want you to stand on your left foot and your right foot's going to do this. And you're going to put your weight on your right hip and you're going to bring your other hand up to your head and you're going to look out the window. Um, so that was also pretty wild. I have some images I can share from that too. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. So those were fun. And, and it reinforced what I already knew, which is like boudoir is just, like I said, you know, creating a safe space for women and, um, the, the photography is what they're buying, but it's not what they get. If that makes sense. Mm, Yeah. Like they get it, but that's not the point. That's not the takeaway. And that's not why it's as impactful as it is. And I, I would challenge a lot of people to really dig deep on that. Like, yeah, frequently our deliverable is not what we think it is, right? Mm-hmm. And like you know, I even think about it with my with my son sometimes. Like, yeah, right now he's at an age where like yes, he really does need me to feed him. Um, but <laughs> you know, I think about even my own relationships, and and if I if I made a list of what I really need from them, I think it would surprise people. I think it would surprise everyone to do this, right? Like, you know, certain. I don't, I, I'm trying to think of an example, but like my mom, for, for example, she, I mean, I actually really do need her to cook for me right now, but, um, <laughs> oh, she's such a doll. <laughs> oh, she's the best. Yeah. She's yeah. so sweet. Um, like, yes, I need her to cook for me, but I also like, I, I need to be, feel cared for because I'm caring for other, so many other people. Yeah. So what I actually need from her is to feel cared for. Mm-hmm. But the food thing's a bad example because I. But the well, I the food is food. part of the <laughs> deliverable, right? right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm so busy with my baby and my businesses and and whatever else. But um, but you know, sometimes it's just it's the care and the attention. Like especially with my business coaching, this comes up a lot too. Because sometimes, um, I'll, I'll go through things where I'm like, am I qualified to coach this particular business or this particular person or whatever? Um, because all of my experience is like hard won. Like I I've learned it. I didn't go to business school. I learned it through running business. Yeah. Um, and so I have, you know, one person in particular that I'm coaching. Um, and like she, her currently, she, her clients are famous people. Like her, her Instagram account has more followers than mine does. And so, you know, it's kind of this point where I'm like, what am I deliver? What, what's my deliverable? And it, it isn't always, um, the brass tacks of like, this is what you should do. This isn't what you shouldn't do, but it's frequently just like listening and mirroring back to them or being, um, being positive, bringing your, your energy, your excitement, and just helping somebody work through something. Um, it's not always like, sometimes they need an expert for something like for sure. 
Mm-hmm. Like, go to a dentist. Like I don't want their positivity. I want their ability to fix my teeth. But, um, but a lot of us <laughs> that have, that have, you know, softer skills, different skills. Like I, I think that there's, um, there's broader, we have broader, um, deliverables than we think about. Yeah. And lending an ear is a huge one. And I like what you said about mirroring back, mm-hmm. you know, and it's interesting. Um, I have had two business coaches. We've been through two year long masterminds and neither one of them have been to business school. Mm -hmm. Um, But they were people that I resonated with. I learned a lot from them. Um, Each of them were different. And then I decided to just like kind of absorb and, and, and live by experience, you Mm -hmm. know, you know, for a while, but thinking back, it's like, it, life is your experience, mm-hmm. you know, 10 years of shooting and from setting up your, I mean, you started your own business right at the, at the get go. Yeah. <laughs> As yeah. a youngster, you know, I think well, those right. are the two things that I think are people kind of are like, all right, a very young person starting their first business or me like starting my first business when I was almost 50 years old. I love that 40 something. And I'm like, so what, what do I have to lose? I love it. You know, I always joke to my husband, I could be out shopping or I could be working, you know, (laughs) let me just, let me just do this. What you know? (laughs) But I, same thing. I feel like I have such an important thing to share with people. Exactly. And that's the why. Mm -hmm. And that's the important part. The important part is always the why. And we can pivot on the how. I think that's the thing. Like you don't pay that's it, it. your why, yeah. you know, yeah. when, when the pandemic hit, I wasn't like, do I really care about women? <laughs> do I really care about helping people? It was like, okay, how can I still help who I help? What do they need for me now? Yeah. And, and how can I continue to make a living and support my team while still being true to our cause and doing what we do? Yeah. And, and that's the how, we, but the why never changed. How. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I, my, my why is always improving the lives of others. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where I start from in one way or another, you know, and that's why we're friends. <laughs> yes. You, you got that right. So my goodness, this has been so enlightening and I don't know, is there anything else you want to tell us? Well, first of all, where can people find you? Sure. So you can find me two places. My photographer. So I'm on Instagram way more than Facebook, although I do show up on Facebook, um, mostly on my personal account, which is Natalie Sinisgali. Um, Ketavon, did I change it? I hyphenated my last name. I needed a longer name. So I, I got married <laughs> and I hyphenated it. Um, and then I hyphenated my child's name, which I already regret. Um, <laughs> so every time you call the pediatrician, they're like, what's your son's name? And I'm like, Oh God, I'm going to say it again. Uh, it's just a really long name, but, um, so on Facebook, it's Natalie Sinis Galley on Instagram, which is where I like hang out. So yeah. like, hit me up in my DMS if you want, um, my attention for reels. Um, I have two accounts. My photography studio is at nspstudio.com. That's D-O-T-C-O-M spelled out. Um, and then my Instagram for embolden is, own your bold. That's my handle for that. Oh, it's um, own your bold. Oh no, okay. that's not true. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's in bold. I'm sorry. Um, own your bold is the name of my podcast. My Instagram is ah. embolden biz at embolden biz. Um, B I Z at the end. B I Z. Yeah. That's what um, I thought. Yeah. Okay. Own your bold was taken. Everything's taken at this point. We have to be creative. Um, I know. so yeah, yeah, so that's, that's where I am. Um, my NSP account is photography based. It's very photography centric. I post about weddings and portraits and, and all that good, good fun stuff. And then in Bolden is where I like swear, like that's, that's, those are my real thoughts. Those are my <laughs> NSP is very buttoned up polished version of me. And in Bolden is a very like authentic version of me. Um, mm-hmm. they're both authentic, but, um, in Bolden is like less, uh, safe for work, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's where I do all my coaching and my, um, my podcast is on there and so good stuff. Fun. So I will put all of this in the show notes and because the show notes will be on my website, if you want to share a couple of those pictures that yeah. you talked about, we can put them up on the website. So I love it. I'll just tell people, you know, go to the actual website, um, and you can find it. 
if you're listening on, on if you're listening to this on any of the apps, mm -hmm. just you can just go to gratefulfitnessny.com and look under podcasts and Natalie's will come up with Love all the it. other ones. So good job. So, this Thank is you so much been, for having me. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, I'm thrilled. Thrilled, thrilled. I love seeing the pictures that you put up. Um, where do I see your baby pictures? I've seen some uh, unbelievably adorable baby pictures. <laughs> I need to post more of them. Um, they're usually on the NSP stories, That's so on, on Instagram, yeah. and I post more about him on Facebook. I try to do a monthly post, although I think I'm a couple months behind. Uh, I'm just okay. insanely accelerate when you have a baby. Is that what happens? Oh my gosh. You know what I used to say? The days last forever and the years go by fast. Yep. He's you know, going to be a year. And I feel like I literally just had him. It gets comical. It's crazy. I feel like I just had babies. And how am I a grandmother? I have no idea. Oh, my God. Your grandchild is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. She's so gorgeous. <laughs> well, that just made my day. Oh, She's my so goodness. beautiful. All right. Well, we better stop or I'll be like babbling all about my granddaughter's <laughs> girl. You guys will never want to hear the end of it. So I'm going to cut okay. us off. We're done. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited that we got to have this chat. Me too. Thank you. And, and thank you to the Airhug community. Reach out and say hi. Nice to meet you all. All righty. Ciao. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Airhug Community Podcast. For references, please check the website at airhugcommunity.com or www.gratefulfitnessny.com and go to the podcast section. If you look up this podcast, it's podcast episode number 20. Um, there will be some pictures of Natalie's work and information on where you can find Natalie. So do me a favor, share this with people who you think would benefit from listening to this amazing episode.